Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Was the church at Corinth, those of you guys that know the Bible, were they all following this? Were they all spiritual? you know, spirit-filled and spirit-led folk there in the Corinthian church, real spiritual examples of what to do? If you read ahead, you know the answer is no. Next week we'll get to chapter 5, we'll see that they actually have quite a bit of immorality. It's like the, um, <clears throat> the sailors made their way into the church, but they didn't leave the sailor ways outside of the doors, but they brought them into the church and they were practicing their fornications and their, and their, and their immorality in the church. To such an extent that we'll see next week, one of the problems, Paul's going to say, it's actually been reported to me, he's over there in Ephesus, that you guys have a man who has taken his father's wife to bed. He goes, that, even in the world, that's wrong. And yet you have it in the church and you're not even addressing it. So next week we'll, we'll go into that. But Paul, before he goes to that, he says, you guys act like, um, this whole gospel thing it doesn't really have any power or any effect on us and so listen to what he says this is something really well, Paul could say this Okay, if you think about Paul did he ever experience the power of God in his ministry L let me read you this it says here in 1 Corinthians 4 he says in verse 18 now I, I have I, <clears throat> I've heard that there's some of you that become arrogant and uh, as though he says, I'm not coming to you. He acting like Paul's not going to do anything about it. And Paul answered in verse 19, but I will come to you soon if the Lord wills. Okay, if the Lord wills. Now he's on his third missionary journey. Those of you guys know history. Does he ever get to go back to Corinth? Some Bible students know the answer to this. You don't have to know this one. The answer is no. He does, desires to, and he says, if the Lord wills, I'm going to come to you. But listen to what he goes on to say. He says, when I come to you, I shall find out not the words of those who are arrogant, but the power. He says, for the kingdom of God does not consist in words, but it consists in power. He says, what do you desire? Shall I come to you, he says, with a rod? Or shall I come to you with love and with a spirit of gentleness? Well, listen, Paul has a question for them. And they knew him. They knew that he had the power of God in his life. I mean, l l let me just show you. Turn to the book of Acts. Now, I don't have time to do as much as I'd like to because <laughs> I could really bring this out. The power that was with Paul. I mean, while he's, he, he's telling these guys, should I come there? The kingdom of God, he says, not a bunch of words. It's power. You know, God's, God has power. Sometimes people forget about this. Like, he's, he's powerless. He can't do anything. Is that true? God has no power? Since when? You know, I, someone asked this week, well, well you know, are, are all the gifts still here? You know, some churches teach that some of the gifts have left, and they were there for back then, but not now. And when Jesus was on there, I said, <laughs> you, you obviously didn't study. He, the, the, the gifts got poured out after he left. And Jesus says, it's to your advantage, I go away because I'll send the Holy Ghost and the Holy Ghost will give you the things you need and he'll lead you and he'll guide you and he'll teach you and he'll bring to your remembrance all that I've spoken to you. And he'll give you the power to be my witnesses to this whole world. We need the Spirit of God, his Holy Spirit, to give us power. Did Paul have the Holy Spirit in his life? Oh, Sure. You're reading the book of Acts. Look, do, do me a favor. Turn to Acts. Let me show you something. Uh, <clears throat> in ver chapter 19, just the next chapter after the Lord told him to stay there in, F or in, in Corinth for a while, he moves on in, into chapter 19. He's on his third missionary journey. He's going back, visiting the churches. He gets to this place, Ephesus. And... Um, Paul, you know, the church at Ephesus, they, um, they, they didn't actually have it all together to start off. You read in chapter 19, and it says, 
Paul, he asked them, um, did you guys receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And uh, <laughs> I love their answer. By the way, this is a good answer. They say, um, no, we haven't even heard whether there's a Holy Spirit. He says, well, uh, what were you baptized into? They say, yeah, in John's baptism. And, and Paul says, well, yeah, John baptized with a baptism of repentance. That's good. He says, telling the people in, 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 that in, to believe in him who was coming after him, right? Who was coming? Who was John the Baptist pointing to? Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away sins of Who was he pointing at? Jesus. So, you know, Paul doesn't go, what, you didn't know? He goes, oh, that's good. John baptized with the baptism of repenting. Turn from your sins. Get ready. Prepare you the way of what? The Lord, the one who's coming. And that's Jesus. That's what I'm here to tell you. And when they heard this, listen to this. Now, Jesus baptized with another baptism. He said, I'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost, with fire, the power to be my witnesses. So when they heard this, listen to this, they hear Paul teaching, you know, because they've been baptized into John's baptism. But as soon as they hear this, listen to what they did. The guys at Ephesus, they said, that, well, we want to be baptized into Jesus. I mean, <laughs> that's the power. And so Paul laid his hands on them and the Holy Spirit came upon them and they began speaking with tongues and prophesying. Just by him putting his hands, praying over them. And they were in all about how many? Listen to this, the church of Ephesus, 12 people, 12 men. And then they entered the synagogue and continued speaking out boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. But some became hardened and disobedient, speaking evil of the way before the people. And he withdrew from them and took away the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrenus. And it says, this took place for two years so that all that lived in Asia both heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. You know, this is believed to be possibly the founding of the seven churches of Asia. You, you know the seven letters to the seven churches in the book of Revelation? You know, the letter to Laodicea, to those. This is believed that this is where they got their start. When Paul started with 12 guys and laid his hands on them and prayed for them to be baptized, with the Holy Ghost in Jesus. And he taught him for two years. Two years they get him on his third missionary journey. Paul is there teaching them of the, of the power of God's Spirit. Now while he's there doing this ministry right here for these two years is when he wrote, I'm just trying to tie some things together for you. This is when he wrote the book of Corinthians that we're reading right now. While he was there, and did any miracles happen with Paul? You know, he just saw the power of God just give these guys the gift of tongues and speaking and prophecy. But then verse 11 says, and God was performing extraordinary miracles by the hands of Paul. So that even the handkerchiefs, oh, I love this. In the Greek, it says the sweat rags. <laughs> okay, like Paul's a tent maker. He's there in Ephesus. It's a hot port area. And he, <laughs> poor Paul, he's so in his tent he gets his hanky out, wipes the sweat off his brow, puts his hanky down, goes back to sewing, and then reaches for his hanky again, and it's gone. And you know why it's gone? Because it says here that even the handkerchiefs or even the apron, he takes off his apron. I'm going to have a bite to eat. Let me take this apron off. It's hot. He comes back. His apron's gone. And you know what they were doing with these hankies and these aprons? It says right here, look at this. They would take them to the body of anyone who was sick and had diseases, and the diseases and the evil spirits would leave the people. They're like, hey, Paul touched this. We got, we got sweat DNA proof right here. They didn't call it that. They just went, you know. I know it sounds weird, but literally the power of God was so, so much on this man that they thought, well, he touched it, you know, <laughs> Smells like him. Yep, that's Paul. Let's take this. I mean, all we got to do is take something he's touched and lay it on a sick person, and they get well. Now, how many of you believe God really did this? I mean, that this was, could, could God do this? This is like, oh, wow, that's too hard, you know. Just the 
think back in the, earlier in the book of Acts when Peter and John and those guys got baptized in the Holy Ghost and it says they took the sick. I love this part in the book of Acts. They took the sick and they lined them up along the street. And <laughs> it says, just so that Peter's shadow, his shadow, I can just see it. They're going, sun's over there. His shadow will be over there. Everyone on this side of the street. Here comes Peter. And, and, and all their, Peter, could you scoot over a little? Yep, that's good. And just so his shadow would touch the sick and the diseased and the, and the ones that had demons. And do you know what? Even just the shadow of Peter touching those sick people, it says, raise them from their infirmity. Do you think the power of God was with these guys? I mean, even just the, the shadow of one guy would heal. Paul says, I want to know, is God with you? You're so arrogant with your words, but what about the power? Because I know I have the power of God with me. He goes on, you read in the next chapter, chapter 20. I love this part. When he gets to Macedonia and Troas, <laughs> he gets into this sermon. Oh, I'm sorry, no, it's still in chapter 19. So, wait. He, um, he, he goes and he preaches. And uh, it says he went kind of long, not like me. <clears throat> you guys know this, right? And, they, and, they, um, and he's teaching. Oh, no, it is chapter 20. I'm sorry, it is. He, he's, he's, um, he's, he's prolonging, it says, his message until midnight on the first day of the week. They were gathered together. He preached all the way till midnight. I wonder how many people I'd lose if I did this. He only lost one, a boy. It says there was a boy. He was sitting on the um, windowsill on the third floor. And it says in verse 8, uh, just look at Acts 20, verse 8. It says, there were many lamps in this room, in the upper room where they were gathered. And, and Eutychus was sitting on the windowsill. This little boy was up there, and he was listening to Paul. And Paul is preaching all the way till midnight. Now, I don't know if it was the, the CO2 from all the lamps going up, you know, got the air a little bit hard to breathe up there, or the kid just fell into a deep sleep, but he fell out of the windowsill onto his head, and he died while Paul was preaching. And, and Paul, Paul, being Paul, you know what he did, right? Some of you, don't worry. It's going to end good. Just don't be afraid. Paul goes over, and he, it says, he, he, he went over to the boy, and he, and <coughs> he picks him up, and, and, and it says he, he falls upon him and, and, and then embraces him. And then says, oh, don't worry, his life's still in him. And he picks up the kid and presents him back to his parents alive. And you think he'd get the hint, wow, you preached too long, Paul, it's time to stop. But no. Paul, it says, went on preaching until, the, until daybreak. I mean, talk about like the middle of the, the sermon getting a little long. You know, he went all the way to midnight, the kid dies. And he goes, oh, short interruption. Falls on the kid. Oh, yep, power of God, kid comes alive. Here you go, here's the kid back. Now, where was I? And he goes right on preaching till the sun rises. And you, you know, Paul was not afraid to say the power of God was with him. The part I meant to tell you about in Acts 19 that, that happened next was he had these guys, the seven sons of Sceva. They were, Sceva was a priest back then. His seven boys started going out and trying to cast out demons like Paul did. And they said, we adjure you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches to come out of that person, you know, to the possessed person. You know what the demons said to those, to those fellows? They said, we know Paul. We know Jesus. Who are you? It says, and the demons left upon the guys and beat them up and stripped them and they fled for their lives bruised and naked. Because they didn't have the power of God in them. They were like name dropping. You need to leave in the name of Paul. Well, Jesus, whom Paul preaches. You know, that guy. Because we heard about him. He's got the power. See, they didn't have the power. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.